Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to build approvals in Power Automate the right way. What's the point of an approval process if the requester can modify the item under approval or change the status of the approval? We need to make sure that while the approval process is ongoing, the item is read only for the requester. Let's check this video out in action. Let's build our SharePoint list and the approval process step by step. In a modern SharePoint site, I'll create a new list. I'll pick the travel requests list template. Use the template. Create. Typically, when we run an approval process, we store the status of the approval as part of the list item. And for that, we create a column of type choice. I'll call this one status. And I'll put three simple choices, pending, approved, rejected. Now, when a user tries to create a travel request, they will also get this column as part of the form experience, which they can set, which is not something we want the user to do. Rather, we want the status to be updated through an approval process. So what we end up doing is we hide this column from the form experience. The travel request template itself also came with a yes, no type column for approved. Even that, as an example, I can go and hide from the form. However, these columns are simply being hidden from the form. A user can always modify this value because they have the access to do so. If they have the permission to contribute to a list in SharePoint, in that case, they will be able to make modifications to any column of that list item. Now the status column, I'll go ahead and delete it. And this template also came with an approved column. I'll go ahead and delete this column as well. A very good option in SharePoint that's available for lists and libraries is content approval. If I go to integrate, power automate, configure flows, one of the options here is content approval. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. If I refresh the list, you will note that a new column gets added called approval status. I'll move this column to the beginning. I'll place it right next to trip title. Now this column is a special column. I cannot edit this column. This column will have three values. Whenever a new item is created, the status would be pending and only an approver can change it to rejected or approved. If I head over to settings and list settings and go to versioning settings, the feature that I enabled content approval is right here. We can also set additional security around who can see the items as they move through the different statuses. Items that are in pending status, Currently, it's set to any user who can read items in this list. I can also set this to any users who can edit items or only users who can approve items and the author of the item. I do not want one user to see other users travel details. So I'll go ahead and turn this option on and click OK. For my list, if I go to permissions, for a standard SharePoint site, we always get three groups by default, which is owners, members, and visitors. Owners have full control. Whoever is an owner will be able to see all the items irrespective of who created it. And they can also act as the approvers. Members have 
edit permissions. Visitors have read-only access. Now for my list, I will stop inheriting the permissions. And for members, if I edit the permission, notice the different permission levels. Edit permission allows the user to add, edit and delete lists. Now this is something that I do not want users who are contributing to this list to do. So I'll go ahead and remove this edit permission and change it to contribute, meaning the user can only work with the items of the list. I'll select OK. Owners, if I edit the permission, I will be using owners as my approvers. But if you have a requirement in which you want to create a separate SharePoint group just for approvers, all approvers require at a minimum is this design permission level because this grants them the access to approve. That's content approval. Back to my SharePoint site, if I go to settings and permissions, owners is Reza, members is Sarah and James. Here's Sarah accessing the travel request SharePoint list. Sarah adds a travel request, submits a travel request. Notice the approval status is pending. Here is James. Notice here, James does not see the travel request that Sarah submitted because the approval status is pending. James will only see it if that approval status is approved. Now James creates his travel request. Here's the travel request that James has submitted. Sarah can still see her travel request only. But Reza, who is the approver, the owner, is able to see all the travel requests. Reza as the approver can select a specific record in the ribbon, approve, reject. And this is where Reza can change the approval status. So let's say I approve Sarah's travel request and I reject James's travel request. Sarah can see that her travel request was approved, but she does not see James's travel request because James's request was rejected. Now James will be able to see that his travel request is rejected, but because Sarah's travel request was approved, James can see the item. That's how content approval works in SharePoint. Full security. Now instead of Reza going to the travel request list, selecting each item, approving, rejecting, why not take advantage of approvals in Power Automate? When the user creates an item and the approval process begins, why not make the item read only for the requester as well by setting item permissions? In Power Automate, I'll go to create, select automated cloud flow, I'll run this approval process when an item is created in my SharePoint list. I'll call it travel request approval and click create. So when an item is created in the HR site in my travel request SharePoint list, I would like to kickstart the approval process. I do not want to allow the user who's made the request to modify the item while the item is under approval. So for that, I'll add an action. Search for the action, stop sharing an item or a file in SharePoint. I'll select this. My SharePoint site, my SharePoint list, ID, dynamic content ID from the trigger action. What this stop sharing an item or a file action does is, it will remove all the permissions from that specific list item. Users who are in the owners group, they have full permissions 
only they will be able to read or edit that item. So I've stopped sharing the item. Next step, I want to grant access to an item or a folder in SharePoint. Pick my SharePoint site, pick my travel request list. ID comes from the trigger dynamic content ID. Recipients, granting access to whom? Here, I'll switch to advanced mode and from dynamic content, pick the created by email address of the individual who created the item in SharePoint. That user, I can grant them read only access or edit access. Here, I'll pick read only access because I'm about to start the approval process and I do not want the person who created the item to make any changes. Now, if my approvers are owners, they will anyways have the access because they have full permission. But if not, you can also give their email addresses right here. Simply put a semicolon and plug in their email address. Next step, approvals. Start and wait for an approval. Approval type, I'll pick first to respond. Travel request, I'll put the title in the title of the approval. Assign to, for this travel request process, I'll pick Reza as the approver. You can set your approvers dynamically. I can plug in the details of the approval, a link to the item under approval, dynamic content link to item. For the link description, I'll put the title. Right after this, I'll add a condition to check the outcome of the approval. Does not contain reject, meaning the approvers that I selected have said approve. In the true branch, I'll add an action, set content approval status SharePoint. My SharePoint site, my SharePoint list, ID, action. I'll set this as approve. If the condition is false, I'll copy this action, paste it in the false branch, and here I'll make sure the action is reject. I'll save the flow. So the flow will change the content approval status depending upon the decision that the approver takes. This flow is triggered automatically. So the flow runs under the context of the primary owner, which is Reza. Very important that the flow owner has approved access on that SharePoint list. Also, in my SharePoint list, I want to add an option where I can track the responses and comments of my approvers. So I'll add a multi line of text column here. I'll call it comments. More options. Enable enhanced rich text and append changes to existing text. Save. I'll go back and edit my flow. Here, my approval action was first to respond. You can pick any approval pattern of your choice and add multiple approvers. What I need here is to take the response of that approval and put it in a nice HTML table that I can plug in into that specific comments field that I just added. And this I've done in a separate video. I've gone ahead and created an HTML table that includes all the details of the approval action. Right before this condition, I'll add an action to update the item in SharePoint. Set the site address, list name, and ID. Parameters. All I will do here is put the output of that create HTML table action. And before plugging it directly, 
I'll just add some styling to the table that gets generated. I'll click add, done. I'll save my flow. The flow is saved and listening to any new travel request that gets created. Here is Sarah, who is a contributor to the list. Sarah creates a new travel request. Notice the comments field is available for Sarah if she would like to enter any commands. It's a full rich text field. Sarah submits the travel request. Once the flow triggers, this item will be locked down for editing. You can see that Sarah only has read only access to this item. That's because the approval process has started. Reza, who is the approver, receives the approval email. Here's the link to the details that Sarah submitted in SharePoint. And Reza can approve or reject directly from the email itself. Enters his commands, submits his response. The response gets logged. The approval status changes to approved. The item is still read only, only for Sarah and the approvers. Sarah clicks on view entries for the commands. We'll open the list item. And here is the full running history of commands for the item. These were the details Sarah entered when she submitted her request. And here is the full approval details. Notice James does not even see the approved request because we have locked down that request only for the requester and the owners. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.